hey, everybody, you know, what do we want out of this whole Lego fiasco? What's what's the end game here? What are we going for? Well, I've got some thoughts about that, so let's talk about that. Hey, everybody, it's Joe, and I've kind of put off this video for, honestly, too long. See, part of the problem was I, I wanted to be done and present the doneness to you. But then when I thought about what I was going to put in the video, there's a lot more to talk about than just the doneness. There's the whole process that I'm working on. For instance, I am in the middle. I've been printing a ton of prototypes of these little Legos, 3D printed Legos, and I've been iterating designs for them. And now that they're sitting here on my desk, my kids are going to run away with them and play with them. But they don't all work. It's it's a difficult process here. So, yeah, I've, I've got that progress to talk to you. But today, I want to talk to you a little bit about what's the end game of this fiasco. What do we want out of this? Now, I want to be clear and, and start with what I don't want. Do I want Lego to go out of business? Do I want them to feel the, the fear of running amok of the maker community. No, that is not what I want. Do I want people standing outside of any store where you can buy Legos, holding up a sign saying, Lego sucks. I would definitely retweet that if that happened, but that's not necessarily what I want out of this whole thing. See, the thing is, I don't hate Lego. I still don't hate Legos. I love Legos. That's why I started making these projects that the Lego Corporation then asked me to take down. That's why I started doing this. But the thing is, 3D printing Legos is very, very difficult. And for a long time, I've had it in the back of my mind that I wanted to use printing Legos as a path to helping you 3D print more accurately. Now, the problem is, as I said, it's difficult. And every time I hit a wall and run into some difficulty in doing this, I would put it off and put it aside. But since Lego came along and kicked the hornet's nest and reminded me that I wanted to do this and quite frankly kind of frustrated me a little bit in asking that my designs be taken down with a takedown notice that they didn't have the right to do, yeah, I'm kind of kicking my plans into high gear and this this idea of Legos as a path to better prints is happening sooner and I'm more diligent and I'm pushing through those blockages that I've run into, which is why I've got so many uh, bricks to work with and I've been trying different designs. Now, there there's three connections that we need to think about when, when we're thinking about 3D printing Legos. One connection is how do the Legos fit to another 3D printed Legos? How do they fit to themselves? Do they snap together and do they pull apart with, with relatively little effort? So that's one. One is Legos to Legos, 3D printed Legos to Legos. One is do they connect with a actual Lego? Now this isn't a Lego brand Lego. This is a generic brand that I bought at the dollar store as part of this cute little car kit. Uh, you know, it's got a little, it's got a little man on the top of it and all that, which I wonder how that will go down. It's not technically a minifig, but it looks a lot like one. Never mind. So I'm connecting the 3D printed brick to the real one, and we're seeing how that connection works. And then there is how does the real brick connect to the 3D printed one. And this one did okay, but I'm using multiple different printers. I'm trying this out different ways and I'm having to figure out a couple of things. One thing that I'm figuring out is how to get the 3D printer to print more accurately and how to do that the right way. There's the right way, there's the wrong way. And I wanna teach you guys how to do the right way, but I haven't quite figured that out. I'm getting close. The other thing that I want to do is to design a better Lego. I want a 3D printed Lego that doesn't require as tight a tolerance is that you can be a little bit off and it will still connect to itself and connect to real life ones, which means I've got some designing to do. Now, I'll show you that in 
just a little bit. But I want to point out that none of this, this idea of teaching you to print accurately and using Legos to do that is going to change. None of that. That was going to happen. It's still going to happen. It's just now it's going to happen sooner. Thanks. But there is something that will change or could change if Lego wanted to make it happen. Now, I need to address something right now about this that's probably ticking off a lot of people and they're warming up the comment section just getting ready to tell me that it's not Legos, it's Lego. That is only true if you are joining with the Lego brand in preventing genericization to their brand. Genericization is a thing that happens. That's a real word. It's a terrible word, but it's, it's a word that happens when a brand becomes a household name. And when a brand becomes a household name, it can cause that brand to lose their trademark. So Lego does not want you saying Legos like it's just a word or they will lose their brand. Now, this has happened before. Let me give you some examples. I've written a list. When people say, hey, hand me a Kleenex, do they mean hand me a Kleenex brand facial tissue? No, they mean just I need a tissue. Any tissue will do. I don't care who makes it. When they say, hey, can you Xerox this? Do they mean can you put this on the Xerox copy machine? No, they mean just put it on the copy machine, whatever brand you got. I don't care. Taser, popsicle, escalator, kerosene, dumpster, thermos, frisbee, zamboni, yo-yo. All of these are brand names that have in some ways become genericized and some of them have actually legally lost their trademark. And the deal is Lego is at risk of that happening to them. I mean, think about that. If, if you have a brick that you bought at the dollar store that doesn't say Lego on it, do you still call it a Lego? I do, and I'll bet you do too. So here's the deal. If Lego wants me to join in fighting with them against genericization, if they want me to stop using the word Legos for a generic Lego brick, then here's what I want from them. First of all, I want an apology. Not, not to me personally. I want them to make some public acknowledgement of their fans, of the maker community, of the people who use what they've created as a stepping off point for doing something amazing. And this is going to be hard for them because Lego wants to be the only game in town. When people took their Connect robots and started doing really cool things with them, that wasn't on the box, they kind of got upset about that, and they tried to stop those people from sharing their plans. Now, they came around on that. They, they realized they were making a mistake and changed their tune on that one. But yeah, they've got a bad history of telling people that they can't use these really cool building, bro uh, building tools that they make to build whatever they want. So I want them to acknowledge their fans. I want them to say, hey, listen, you guys are going to do cool. We'll, we'll keep making cool stuff if you guys will keep doing cool stuff with that. I want them to recognize us, not me personally, us as a group, as being their real value. Secondly, I want them to make 3D models of their bricks available you can put it behind a paywall if you want. I don't care. But I want them to embrace makers and say, here's the tools that you can use to do something cool with. Now, the thing is, those models are already out there, okay? It would not take very many keystrokes in Google to find an archive that will allow you to print a brick with ease. But... If Lego were to make an official repository or some official dump and say, here, do something cool with this, it would be a huge step in the right direction of acknowledging makers and letting us 
join with them in making something cool. Now, do I think that's going to happen? No. But that's what it would take for me to join Lego in fighting their genericization, for one. So, there it is. Lego, though, has another problem. And I don't know if they're aware of this, but I'm, I'm really... I would be surprised if it wasn't on their horizon. See, right now, admittedly, 3D printers are not a threat to a company like Lego or any company that their business model is based on making a plastic thing. But that's not going to be true forever. And whether it's five years or ten years down the road, if your business model is make a plastic thing for people, there will sooner or later be a 3D printer that is fast, that is accurate, that is appliance-worthy, that is easy enough to use, that people will stop buying plastic things because they have a machine that will be able to make it fast and easy in their home. Yes, we're, we're not there, but there's a very good chance that one day we will be. And when that day comes, what do they got? What are they going to do? Now, here's the deal. Lego usually makes the right choice. They have come back from bankruptcy and obscurity and managed to become a powerhouse because they, they made the right choices when it counted. And I trust that they can make the right choice right now. Does that right choice mean that they should get into the 3D printer market, that there should be a Lego brand 3D printer? How cool would that be? I don't know. I don't know what the right choice is for them, but I'll tell you this. When they came out of bankruptcy, when they came out of obscurity, it was only through collaboration. They collaborated with brands to make themed Lego sets. And in doing so, they managed to save themselves. And they managed to become a powerhouse in and of themselves. It's, it's odd to think that we have a Lego movie because of Lego Star Wars sets and things like that. But boy, did they leverage that brand to save themselves, pull themselves out of the fire, and, and become amazing. So it was collaboration that saved them then. It will be collaboration that saves them in the future. And that collaboration will be with their fans, with the people who are making them amazing, who are taking the building tools that they're making and doing amazing things with it. Lego, we're your friend. We're, we're your biggest fan, but we can also be your friend. If you work with us, you'll never die. Even though you might not have legally the right to control this, we will fight for you if you will join with us. Now, I said that I've got uh, a new design for a Lego brick coming up. And I, I kind of, like I say, I'm, I'm not fighting their fight against genericization. So I kind of just want to call this a Lego brick, even though it's very, very different. But I'm also playing with some different names for it. I'm thinking of calling it a, a printable interlocking brick or PIB. But PIB sounds terrible. Uh, a generic interlocking brick or GIB. I don't know. Although I do kind of like Gib, but I thought it would be interesting to call it generic interlocking brick, open spec, as if to say, I don't care how you make this, you can make this, but here's how you make it. Uh, and that way the, the acronym for it would be a Gibos. If you got a better idea, go ahead and put it in the comments. I will, however, say that it is mega block compatible or something silly like that. So it can still be found, but, uh, would you like to see it? It's coming along, guys. I'll tell you more about this. We'll break down this design next time. I kind of like how this one here, it almost, uh, it almost forms like a logo. It's pretty cool, guys. This is my, this is my, you don't need to have a super accurate printer to print a interlocking brick brick. 
and we'll talk about the design. We'll talk about uh, where it's coming from and how you can make your own next time. Thanks very much for watching.